From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Diversified miner Anglo-American launched the world's first zero-emission hydrogen-powered mine haul truck last month. Capable of carrying a 290-ton payload, it also generates more power than its diesel predecessor. Malene Arnoldi attended the launch. The 2-megawatt hybrid truck is stationed at the Mohalakwena Platinum Group Metals Mine in Limpopo. Anglo had been designing the truck and its supporting ecosystem since 2019 in partnership with multinational utility NG and other energy technology companies Ballard, First Mode and Enprox. The new gen hydrogen ecosystem comprises a 3.5 megawatt hydrogen electrolyzer and hydrogen storage tanks storing 800 kilograms of hydrogen at 500 bars of pressure. The ecosystem also has a truck retrofit area and solar PV panels that feed the mine grid. Anglo Technology Development, Mining and Sustainability Head Julian Souls tells us what the hydrogen ecosystem comprises and why this innovation is significant, not only for the Anglo group, but also for the mining industry. So what you saw here today is we're essentially taking sunlight and we're using a solar plant to generate electricity and then we're feeding that into the electrolyzer with water to turn it into hydrogen. And then hydrogen is that storage medium now. We're using that to store the energy that we've generated from the sun. And then we're transferring that to the truck. And then that is what's being converted back into electricity by the fuel cell. And that enables us to go and perform the, uh, the truck operations. And so the only, like you saw, the only thing that was emitted from that truck was water vapor. And so what we demonstrated here was the full power capability, its ability to actually load and haul material, which is our objective. So when we look at the impact that this can have on, you know, not just Anglo-American, but also the broader mining industry, I think what we've shown today is that we can decarbonize one of the hardest to abate emission sources in mining, which is diesel. Um, we have solutions for the electrical power via renewable, and what we, with combining that with hydrogen, and the capability and performance we get from, uh, from using a hydrogen truck like this, we're able to actually deliver the same type of operational performance and match it with what will be the new kind of power sources that we use going forward in the world. Anglo aims to have eight mines down to net zero emissions by 2030, which involves replacing its entire diesel fleet. About 80% of the group's diesel consumption is on large trucks. A diesel mine haul truck of this size uses about 3,500 litres of diesel per day, which equates to about 1 million litres a year. The developing partners replaced the 2,700 horsepower diesel engine on the truck with eight parallel fuel cells, totaling 837 kilowatt, and a 1.2 megawatt hours lithium ion battery. The truck had undergone building, modification and testing in the US for 12 months before being transported to South Africa for a first motion test in March. The truck carries 68 kilograms of hydrogen on board, which is sufficient to operate the truck for one to two shifts, depending on the load. Souls tells us more about Anglo's immediate plan to optimize the technology and what it may progress to. We've already started looking at freight train applications as well, kind of moving beyond the mine. But really our, our main focus right now is learning from, from this demonstration that we have here and also designing and making a pathway to commercialization. And so what we have to do there, we've already been working on it now for about a year, um, and really just going down and figuring out how we're gonna bring cost out of the solutions. Um, and then over time, we're trying to hit diesel cost parity. While Anglo is undertaking testing and fine-tuning of the prototype truck, and assuming it proves economically viable to scale to more operations, the company intends on converting all of its mine haul trucks to hydrogen. The trucks do not yet perform as well on range compared with diesel power trucks, despite meeting many of the other performance metrics, and Anglo plans to work on this. Anglo-American process modeling principal Carl Bergman elaborates. Bear in mind this is a proof of concept truck, so we're not there yet. We are on the next five to six years development cycle of how do we get to a production line. So at the moment, as she's standing over there, no, she doesn't compare in terms of range to the diesel trucks. They can operate 24 hours without having to refuel again, but they burn 3,500 litres of diesel. Whereas here, we don't burn anything, we don't have any emissions, and now we've just got to fine-tune our design, better develop products so that we can get the range. Um, Anglo 
is in the process of finalizing its hydrogen fleet rollout plan, but it intends on converting 10 to 20 trucks a year globally, taking three to four years to complete the group's full 40 truck fleet transition. If the rollout plan is successful, Anglo could remove up to 80% of its diesel emissions at its open pit mines. Anglo-American Platinum CEO Natasha Fuyun discusses the greater purpose of the hydrogen truck making mining more sustainable and Anglo's role in the energy transition and spearheading the hydrogen economy. Today is about more than a truck. Today is about how we celebrate human ingenuity that was pioneered through thought leadership, delivered through collaboration, and driven by a clear purpose to reimagine mining to improve people's lives. And as been mentioned, we are privileged as a company, Anglo-American Platinum, part of our province, part of our country, to have been the site where we could um, host this excellent technology development and be part of this pioneering work. The truck is also proof how the mining industry and PGM specifically can help address societal challenges such as climate change, but also close to my heart is local economic development closely linked to just transition. It has happened through political will and determination with the right partnerships and by taking an innovation-led approach that we've been able to make this positive difference in our host communities and in our host country. And if I reflect a little bit about the collaboration, I've heard today people in this audience being proud because they were part of the licensing. People who are proud because they were part of designing the systems really making a breakthrough in all, every aspect, every building block that brings this system together. It was a true private-public partnership that brought us here today. The platinum group metals that we mine already play a central role in creating a healthier, cleaner and greener and a more connected work world. Platinum, rhodium and palladium in particular are vital ingredients in catalytic converters that the automotive industry uses to neutralize harmful pollutants in internal combustion engines. But now as we look to the future and the transition into electrified drivetrain, PGMs will be a significant driver of that energy transition. In the hydrogen economy, for example, platinum is a key ingredient in um, PEM electrolysis, electrolysis that is used to produce hydrogen. And in the fuel cells, that is used to drive our truck. At this facility that we are here today, we also mine a significant amount of copper, nickel and cobalt as byproducts to our PGMs, metals that will be in an increasingly short supply as the global market share of battery electric vehicles continue to grow. We are also investing in applications to use PGMs platinum group metals in batteries as part of our IP ventures and line battery um, partnerships. As you can see, we are actively working towards increasing our role in decarbonisation of our own mines, but ultimately developing entire industries that will, be ben will benefit from this technology, from the technology that will unlock um, the usage of renewables. And thinking about our role, Anglo-American Platinum's role in the energy transition, I'm very proud to the work, um, I'm very proud of the work that we as an organization has done. The challenges that this team has set on everyday task of reimagining mining to improve people's lives. What does this mean at a practical level? It means that we are on the forefront of how mining facilitates everyday life. Very often, mining is under, under the shadow of very negative messaging. The reality is without mining, none of society that we see around us today would be possible. And as a mining company, we take our role in driving a positive society forward very seriously. The work of reimagining mining to improve people's lives is not about twiddling our thumbs and waiting for the implementation of more stringent regulatory requirements to achieve climate change, risk mitigation, but is doing the right thing, especially when nobody's watching. 
Our unique position as the world's largest primary supplier of PGMs also means we have a responsibility to spearhead the development of a hydrogen economy in our country and the ability to help South Africa unlock the potential of this opportunity. We believe the building of a hydrogen economy will be essential in having lower carbon emissions and reaching our, reaching our targets as per our Paris Climate Agreement. It has the potential to unlock growth, diversify the economy, developing new skills, create jobs and position South Africa as, as an exporter of green energy and drive the demands for PGMs that South Africa is so richly blessed with. In his keynote address at the event, President Cyril Ramaphosa remarked how mining is always reinventing itself and will continue to do so for the betterment of society. He highlighted how Anglo's green hydrogen generation shows how the hydrogen economy has arrived for South Africa. In ways both beneficial and harmful, mining has shaped our country over more than 150 years. It has driven our industrialization and secured our position in the global economy. Much as the Fraser Institute, as Minister Mantashe was saying now, now puts us at the bottom in terms of uh, investor attractiveness or investment attractiveness. Mining has always been, in my view, a sunrise industry, and it has always recreated itself. And even in South Africa, we will continue to recreate ourselves. Throughout its history, the mining industry has been at the forefront of technological advancement in response to whatever evolving nature of its operations. Yet even as the technology changed, even as machines have gotten bigger and also better, one thing has remained the same. Mine load haulage has been powered by fossil fuels. Until now, until the launch today of the world's largest mine haul truck powered by green hydrogen that will be produced, yes, at the mine site, but which also shows us that the hydrogen economy is beckoning us as a country, as an industry. And with this truck that we see here, it basically means that the hydrogen economy has definitely arrived for South Africa, and today we celebrate its arrival. What we are launching here today is not merely an impressive piece of machinery, it is the genesis of an entire ecosystem powered by hydrogen. And that is why I say this is also the genesis of our hydrogen economy. We've been talking about this, and even at the investment conference, Anglo-American, as they made their commitments, they did give an inkling that this is where we are going. And yes, Minister Mantashe, they have delivered on what they committed to do at the investment conference. So thank you very much, Anglo-American, for having done that. Now, developing the hydrogen economy is a strategic priority for our country. And that is why I say once again that this is a smart step for Anglo-American, but it's a gigantic leap for South Africa's hydrogen future economy. This is what gives us a window to the future, that what we've been talking about, about developing a hydrogen economy, which many countries around the world are seeking to get into. We here in South Africa, with today's launch, have already proven that we are taking a gigantic leap into the future of this economy of hydrogen. Not only will it be a valuable driver of economic growth, as well as employment. It will also contribute to our decarbonization efforts. The new gen project provides demonstrable proof 
of the potential of this sector. And it is a huge potential. It takes us from concept to reality. So we're moving from conceptualization to the realism of what that future beckons or means. That's Kramer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.